Hello, Accounting 201 students. We are ready to begin Chapter 4. This is another chapter that is very important that we understand how to do the adjusting entries and the closing entries. In this PowerPoint, we are going to explain the Revenue Recognition Principle and the Expense Recognition Principle. We're going to differ differentiate between the cash basis and the accrual basis of accounting. We're going to explain why adjusting entries are needed and identify the major types of adjusting entries and prepare adjusting entries for deferrals. Most businesses need immediate feedback about how well they are doing. For example, management usually wants monthly reports on financial results. Most large corporations are required to present quarterly and annual financial statements to stockholders. And the Internal Revenue Service requires all businesses to file annual tax returns. Accounting divides the economic life of a business into artificial time periods. As we learned in Chapter 2, this is period, periodicity assumption. Accounting time periods are generally a month, a quarter, or a year. Many business transactions affect more than one of these arbitrary time periods. For example, a new building may be purchased, or a new airplane will be used for many years. It doesn't make sense to expense the full cost of the building or the airplane at the time of the purchase because each will be used for many subsequent periods. Instead, we determine the impact of each transaction on specific accounting periods. Determining the amount of revenues and expenses to report in a given accounting period can be difficult. Two principles are used as guidelines, the Revenue Recognition Principle and the Expense Recognition Principle. The Revenue Recognition Principle requires that revenue be recognized in the accounting period in which it is earned. A service company recognizes records or revenue when their services are performed. Service businesses <coughs> recognize revenue when the services are performed, although many customers may have been billed for the services on account. The cash has not been received, however, the services have been performed, therefore revenue should be recognized. Does Delta Airlines record revenue when you buy a plane ticket on May 1 for a flight on June 15? Has a service been provided? The answer to both of these questions is no. Delta cannot recognize revenue on May 1 because the service has not been provided. The revenue will be recognized on June 15 when the ticket holder takes the flight. Here is another illustration. Assume Conrad Dry Cleaners cleans clothing on June 30th but customers do not claim and pay for their clothes until the first week of July. The journal entries for June and July would be to debit accounts receivable and credit the service revenue in June and then in July we'll debit cash and credit accounts receivable when we actually receive payment. In recognizing expenses a simple rule is followed. Let the expenses follow the revenues. Thus, expense recognition is tied to revenue recognition. The preceding example, this means that the July expense Conrad incurred in performing the cleaning service on June 30th should, re should be reported in the same period in which it recognizes the service revenue. The critical issue in expense recognition is determining when the expense makes its contribution to revenue. This may or may not be the same period in which the expense is paid. If Conrad does not pay the salary incurred on June 30 until July, it would report salaries payable on its June 30 balance sheet. The practice of expense recognition is referred to as the expense recognition principle, often referred to as a matching principle. It dictates that efforts expenses be matched with results. And you can see this illustration shows these relationships. Accrual basis accounting means that transactions that change a company's financial statements are recorded in the periods in which the events occur, even if cash was not exchanged. For example, using the accrual basis means that companies recognize revenues when earned, even if cash was not received. Likewise, under the accrual basis, companies recognize expenses when incurred. <laughs> Excuse me. An alternative to the accrual basis is the cash basis of accounting. 
Under cash basis accounting, companies record revenue only when cash is received. They record expense only when cash is paid. The cash basis of accounting is prohibited under generally accepted accounting principles. Why? Because it does not record revenue when earned, thus violating the revenue recognition principle. Similar, similarly, it does not record expenses when incurred, which violates the expense recognition principle. If you return to the illustration of the service business and the airlines, if the service business used cash basis accounting, revenue would be recognized only when cash was received. Delta would recognize revenue on May 1 when the ticket was purchased. All expenses of both the service business and Delta would be recorded when cash was paid. Many businesses use the cash basis of accounting. These businesses outgrow the method when accounts receivable and accounts payable become substantial. Also, if the businesses need audited financial statements, they must comply with GAAP and use the accrual basis. Companies can use the cash method and that <clears throat> its use doesn't mean that income is being manipulated.